Welcome to CPAC now. We're on the road here in Las Vegas, Nevada with some of our favorite people. And I got to tell you, I love my next guest, songwriter and singer Natasha Owens. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Okay, so you have literally captured the hearts of the grassroots people. I mean, with your, uh, especially with your latest song, Trump Won. What made you think, all right, I'm going to go with this song. I'm going to move forward with it. You know, for years, we were censored. We were taken down on Facebook. We weren't allowed to say it. Right. So we just thought, you know what? Let's sing it. Let's give a voice back to the people who, can, who is not allowed to say it. Right. They can just sing it, right? And so we had been, uh, some of the words that are in Trump One, we've been singing around our house for two, two and a half years. Okay, got it. And so we said, it's time to just give a voice back to the people. Right, right. And then you also came out with Party People, which is hilarious. Yeah. It is so funny. What was your inspiration for that song? You know, I know probably everyone listening to this is tired of the two-face in Washington, in our state, in the state of Texas with the Ken Paxton thing that just happened. I am sick and tired of what I call rhinos. I actually call them Judas Republicans. Oh, wow, yeah. Because um, they're either, I think they either have blackmail on them or they're, they're lining their pockets with money and they do not make the best decisions for America and they do not put Americans first. So, and so we called them out. Let me ask you, what, what, kind of inspired you to start doing more political songs though you know uh, I mean because your your background is contemporary Christian correct right and and it's it's a bit of a shift into that political world you know I come from a background of my dad dying 13 years ago I went through depression I fought for years for my freedom of my mind right mm -hmm. and then we went through COVID after I got my life back we went through covid and i'm sure everyone listening to this and you as well saw how much they infringed upon our freedoms yep. and we live in a culture today that is anti-flag anti-america and i just think this is the greatest country on earth with all of our faults we are still the lighthouse on the hill and so i wanted to do a patriotic album to um just put that spotlight on it and yeah. then we just veered a little further and a little further and uh i want to sing about things that are truth stand on a foundation of truth and hold the line on biblical principles so i gotta ask you because you you we had this conversation about contemporary christian uh, music and just the whole industry itself um obviously you went into that genre of music first uh, what were the, I guess, the highlights, but there was also the disappointments that came with that. You know, that genre of music is fantastic. It's the worship side. It's the little bit of 80s rock in it, yeah. uh, a little bit of hard rock in it. I love this industry. However, the toxic um, atmosphere in Nashville, it is toxic. Yeah. And they are getting more pro progressive, more liberal, and they're not standing on truth. And so uh, I kept getting further and further away with my ideals, and I didn't think they were very radical. I just love this country and love God. You also right? sang a song that had to deal with a, a pro-life topic. How was their reaction when you uh, came up with that song? Well, they frowned upon the patriotic album, and then I put on that album a song called Stand for Life that we wrote for Susan B. and yeah. for just a to give an anthem for the pro-life movement. No one's right. really written a pro-life song. Yeah. And so uh, that was what did... Did that was the last nail in the coffin, I think, in the contemporary world because the uh, promoters, the uh, radio stations felt that I was too pro life. That, um, but you think would line up with the Christian values, you would yeah. think, but they are so afraid of offending, they're so afraid of being canceled, yes. and they're not ready to be persecuted or hated. So they toe the line and they don't take a stand and they stick their hand in us in the sand just like an ostrich. and. That's not the way to well, do it. I, I got to tell you, I think that uh, you, like some of these other artists that are breaking out right now in this moment where the traditional musical music industry, they, they don't get it and they're far behind. You guys are make, really, really uh, paving a way forward for what I say is brave, courageous music that Americans want to hear. So thank you for doing that. Um, Natasha, you. we're, you're, uh, you've, got, you've gone to CPAC several times. Why is it so important to uh, be here at uh, here at the you know CPAC? I know you've done the, even the bigger CPACs than this. Walk us through what, why you do you what know, co in coming and joining us. I love CPAC for yeah. the fact that y'all stand up on truth. You fight for conservative values, and uh, you're bold. 
you're unapologetic and bold. And I love that. I think that that's why America is attaching to President Trump, attaching to CPAC, attaching to this movement because of the boldness. They just want people to shoot them straight. Well, and they're attaching to Natasha Owens. Where can they find your music? NatashaOwensMusic.com is the platform, or just Google my name. Go to any place that you down download or stream music, and you'll find me. Right. Well, thank you so much thank for joining you. me. And thank okay. you all for watching. God bless.